Welcome to the Crazy Time Podcast. I'm Jonas. I'm TNT. Dying on my day explosive one. Let's crack into another one. So, TNT, have you Yo. ever been to a uh, probably fast food place where they have one of those like super pop dispensers where you can like pick like Coke or whatever and then there's like all the different flavors of Coke or you can have like you can have the cherry syrup or the grape syrup or the orange syrup or the whatever. Have you seen all those? I have seen those. Uh, I don't really drink soda, but yeah, I, I'm aware of them. I've, I've I've had one before. It's pretty cool. Like you can put vanilla in anything, cherry in anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, they always good. have like the weird pops you can't find like Mellow Yellow Zero. Like mm-hmm. you can't ever find that in the store, but they got it in that machine. Mm-hmm. Like It's really cool. So they're coming out with one of those machines, but for Heinz condiments. I'm sorry, what? There is a Heinz customizable sauce dispenser with more than 200 condiment combos coming to restaurants. What kind of combos so do I need, though? What it said was... This is going to be gross. I think It's it, actually... No. So, so to make a customized sauce, the consumers will st- at the touch screen will st- select your base sauce, which is either going to be ketchup... Ew. Ranch, yuck, fifty-seven sauce, ill, or barbecue sauce. No mustard. Yeah, that's weird, right? But anyways, the fudge, so then, guys. Then you add in the enhancers that include things such as jalapeno, smoky chipotle, buffalo, mango, and then all the different oh, okay. intense. So you basically like you're like I want hot mango ketchup, and like you okay. make it, and it you put it on your hot dog. You can infuse your ketchup with different uh, tastes. Yeah, I saw that and I was like, All right, "I'm on board." I don't, I don't use that many condiments. No, I don't either. But I'm on board with that. I like that. I would like if I went to a place to eat and I was eating something that required a condiment to have those types. Yeah, of like options. if I went to like Chili's and they had, and they served a burger and they were just like, "Go to the condiment machine." Yeah, and I'd be like, "Oh, that's kind of cool." Right. Like I did go to this one place in Austin. I can't remember what the name of it is. I don't even know if it's open anymore. But I went there with my ex wife and like we stopped in and you just order you ordered like and I guess there's another place near this in Pennsylvania that's kinda like this, but it was called uh, you just ordered like I want a cheeseburger or a hamburger or whatever, and that's all you got. <laughs> just a, a burger on a that's, bun. I'm sorry, that sounds like most restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid I don't. You really... order a burger and that's all you get. <laughs> and Man, then you imagine go up that. And they have like a salad bar, but it's all stuff to put on the burger. It's like okay. lettuce, tomato, onion, all these different kinds of onion, all these different condiments, all this whatever. And like, I think there might have been like bacon on there and like all that stuff. And you just like you get your plain ass burger and then you go and you just like doctor it up however the hell you want. No. Now that I think about it, there was another place called Roy Rogers on the. Pennsylvania Turnpike that was I've like heard of Roy Rogers and yes they do have that there they got a pretty good burger though Roy Rogers never been there but I've heard of it I lived in PA for a little while so yeah 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 it was good but yeah man that would that actually would be sweet you know it would be really good for like a chicken sandwich restaurant because I feel like people mm-hmm. get more adventurous on chicken sandwiches than they do on burgers yeah. like you know what he put in like bu- buffalo ranch with th- three levels of jalapeno on their burger and see now this is the same uh, same business model as like a mod pizza my pizzas are good. You get to make your own pizza right there on the spot, dude. And they have like a bunch of different ingredients, more ingredients than like your standard. It's like a Chipotle place. for pizzas. Uh, yeah. And then yeah, they except- cook it in like four minutes. Ex- yeah, that's, dude, that's, that's the, the best part. part. Those that fire oven part. pizzas are so good. That is the best part. You throw it in like an 800 degree oven and it's just like cooked. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the idea of a restaurant that you make all the stuff there versus just ordering it off the menu and just like getting it. It feels like they're going to charge you more than it's worth. That part. They're like, here's a $30 burger, and then you doctor it up yourself. Like, yeah. I want the chef back there doctoring it up. He gets paid to make Exactly. It. Like, sometimes don't you just want to order the food and just chill? So you're like the nurse <laughs> practitioner of the hamburger? <laughs> All right. Yeah, they're like, here you go. Here you go, sir. You're working under my license. Uh, go ahead and <laughs> go ahead and make your burger. I got to take this burger through rehab now. Exactly. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I don't know. So, I don't know. I like a my pizza. I've never actually had a my pizza, but I like the idea of it. I had one that was, there was another, It's a. it was like a ripoff called like Brick something, I think. Brickstone. Is that the LeBron James one? Because I know he ordered Oh, one the it. one that chokes and loses? <laughs> Why are you, he, honestly, Jonas, they're doing pretty good right now. I know, they're ranked seven and they're about to go all the way. And I don't need you hating on LeBron. He did bring a championship to Cleveland. No, the so. Flat Earther brought one to us. Uh, hey, listen, listen. We can talk about that for a few minutes if you want. 
<laughs> I was actually listening to I was listening to an episode of the Breakfast Club, and they'll just have like uh, their listeners call in or whatever. I really would love to be able to do that, but I know it's not something that we can probably do. But uh, they had oh, one, I would love to have people call in. Right? Dude, that would be the best. They had one guy call in, and he was like, "The Earth is flat. The Earth is flat," and they're just like. This dude is an idiot. <laughs> like, you can just hear it in their voices, but they just let him talk. And then it's like the number one question that I have for any flat earther, and I've had this before in the past, is why? Why does the government need to lie about the earth being flat? What does it prove? Like, where there's no monetary gain? Oh, like, why? Like, where's the conspiracy? Like, what's the purpose of the conspiracy? Exactly. Like, most conspiracies is like to put a chip in your arm with a vaccine or like whatever, but like, Every, what are they winning? Everything has a purpose. I get up and go to the bathroom because I have to shit. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I lie to my girlfriend about cheating on her because I don't want her to be mad. The government is lying to me about the earth being flat because they want you to fall off the edge when you're not expecting oh, it. Oh, because nothing. So it doesn't even make sense. So like, why, why would there be a conspiracy? It's, I mean, like, why would you hide a bunch of emails? It's more if, work to conceal the lie than it would be to just tell the truth. <laughs> it's so much work. I don't know. No, no. I mean, I never thought of it that way, but that's actually, like, what are they gaining by... Exactly. ...pretending the Earth is not flat? Exactly. There's nothing to gain. Now, they lie to us about the way the government works, 100%. They lie about landing on the moon because they want us to think we're cool. Uh, we're going back to the moon. <laughs> we're going back to the moon. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know no, about that. I don't know about the moon. But, but I think the funniest part about the moon landing is that that happened in, like, 1960. Yeah. And I, the year is off a little bit, but around in the, that time frame. For sure. And technology was so bad back then. And then that, and, and then we part. haven't been back in almost a hundred years. Like why like we Elon could fly there tomorrow with the space with his SpaceX. All right. It does seem a little sus that we figured uh, we'd be going there all the time. By it's like, now. It's like right there. We got Google Fiber, you know? Yeah, they'll, yeah, they'll run a cable on the back of the spaceship all the way from right. Earth to they'll, they'll, yeah, dude. We got these little pocket devices with the sun total. Starlink would work. Yeah. They didn't even have the internet. They could have the, a moon base. This is what I'm saying. And, like, the the fact that there literally is, like, a Deep Space Nine moon, I mean, not moon base, but, like, space station just floating out there right now with people inhabiting it. Like yeah. The, like, the Star Trek Enterprise is absolutely insane to me. It's, like, the most mind-blowing thing. Like, I don't think people realize And they've lived that. there for years, is forever. That, there's Russians and Americans up there right now just, like, fist bumping or... Uh, bumping uglies. Whichever. Well, they're floating though. They ain't got no gravity. Um, how do you mean fist bump? You can't fist bump with gravity. If they do it too hard, they're gonna fly into the wall. If you fist can't bump use that too, inertia. If you fist bump, yeah, any momentum is gonna push you away. From, if you do it hard enough, you're gonna like push yourselves off the ship. So what happens if they like fart? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I don't know if it works. They probably that way. gotta hold on to a railing. <laughs> All right, Jonas, I'll keep that in mind. If <laughs> Next space, time you're in space, never fist bump in space. It can be detrimental. You might fly away. But it is it's crazy to think that there's a space station up there right now, and I can understand people thinking that that might be a lie. Though it's like, why would they lie about it? I think that's yeah. I just don't understand why we haven't been back to the moon. Um, I want a moon base. Probably because it was a lie. <laughs> I mean, that's the only thing that makes sense with that. Like, why wouldn't we have been there more often? Well, well he, not not only that. Why has no other country went there? We went there once. No other countries ever went there. They were just like, "Oh, America went. Guess it's enough." Yeah. Oh, and then we were like, "Don't worry, guys. There's nothing there. Don't ever go back. Don't go. Yeah. Don't take moon rocks up home. There. There's nothing worth yeah. it." Yeah. What if that's where the aliens live? And they were like, "Listen, don't come back yeah. here. You keep Dude, your ass. Don't mess with us up here. We're not coming back." Bro, I'm telling you right now, aliens exist. I don't necessarily think they're the cause of the mass of UFOs that have been being called on right now, but I do know they exist. Listen to our Fermi Paradox episode. Oh, we talked all about that, man. That, that was, was a good episode. That was a long time ago. That was. That was years ago. That was probably five years ago we did that. <laughs> that was when you used to do editing. 
Yeah. I used to like come all prepared. That that was the most prepared I've ever because I had to figure out how to explain that not only to you to the audience to, that it made sense. It was such a big concept. I had to like read it and be like Wait, do I understand what I'm saying right now? And be like, yeah. And I had to like conceptualize it and then like yeah, that was rough. Yeah, I'm really glad that we do the format where we don't know what the hell we're talking about now. Yeah, <laughs> truth over facts is way better. <laughs> right, we don't know what, we what the do. hell we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I saw a story. I'm like, I think this lady did it. Where, where did it happen? <laughs> I don't know. Somewhere. It's, yeah, it's exactly. Stuff. We talk about stuff we read on the internet. That's it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Anyways, know. go to crazynown.com for Jonas. You too. Uh, we out. Have-